Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, one and all, to the third edition of the RBG Monthly Roundup. This will be our April edition of the podcast, letting you know all things that have been going on for the past month in RBG Esports. I am joined once again this evening with our CEO, Josh Arcia, a.k.a. Randomize. Hello. And we are joined, finally, by our long-lost COO, Michael Swan, a.k.a. Me Swan Jr. Yo! And once more, our familiar face, Kyle Malone, a.k.a. Beard Runner, our Hello. operations director. Thank you all for joining me here this evening. Once more, I am that one, Dan Guy, a.k.a. Daniel Stupp Radican. And we're here for our third edition of the podcast. We've gotten nice and comfortably settled in the routine. Our community has been wonderful with all of your feedback and questions and your engagement. Uh, this will be our first edition that is not live streamed to Twitch. So if you are finding this <clears throat> on YouTube through a Twitter link, um, through a rerun or a VOD or anything of that sort, welcome. Please uh, feel free to give us any questions you have uh, using our Twitter account at RBG Esports uh, in the Discord or simply in the comments section below. Feel free to check beneath the video for all of our social links and contact us that way. But... We've got some big announcements to make as far as rosters, uh, continuing progress with our uh, new Rocket League team, some things shaking up in the Hearthstone world, and uh, some big changes in the state of the games themselves. So, I think we'll kick things off with uh, Michael. I think you were probably the one that most excited to talk about uh, our Hearthstone edition recently, yes? Yes. So, we added Villain who qualified for the Masters Tour event in Vegas. <clears throat> he has already placed top 200 legend uh, for this month. And the way the qualifiers work for South Korea is um, during essentially what is the NA portion of the Masters Tour, uh, if you place top 200, you then qualify for a tournament you'll play during prep for uh, Asia. So he's already said he's got one qualifier that if he plays top places top four in he's going to he's going to South Korea and then he also can qualify via the Open Cups themselves. But we're really excited. He's a phenomenal player. He's really super knowledgeable of the game. He's a really nice guy. He's going to be a phenomenal teammate and really help uh, run. He said innovation and Manny Show grow even more. We've seen a lot of growth in our <laughs> core roster in the in their first year of playing together and prepping together and going to events. But now that the Hearthstone esports scene is set differently, we're going to take a different approach. We've added a, a really smart veteran player to just elevate the roster. And so we're excited to go to Vegas, um, crossing fingers to go to South Korea. And uh, they'll be announcing the Europe venue hopefully soon. So RBG looks to be cruising to uh, some really nice <laughs> events. Right, we're yeah, just we gonna, to see, yeah, yeah. We're, we're really looking forward to, to Hearthstone. We we like where we were last year, and we're even we're in a better position now. So that's overall improvement is just good. Certainly, seeing uh, RBG go properly worldwide is going to be uh, oh, absolutely. an exciting time. Hopefully, yeah. So I mean, uh, it's 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 honestly awesome to literally. We didn't even make a full announcement of villain, um, until I believe yesterday, which is yeah. We're recording we're recording on a Wednesday, so that was on a Tuesday. And I think what the coolest thing was we we just put villain in the space that we have the players talk, and literally we we're like welcome villain players welcomed him and he came in and they just went at it they started talking they started you know villain already shared one of his decks that uh, he was using and you know, it's just it's really cool to have an addition of a player like that who's so gung ho and ready to go. And yeah, and our other did players, not mean to rhyme that. <laughs> our other players have always been so like eager to learn too. I remember that from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. They've always gotten together on their own to have like meetups to talk about decks and talk about strategies and what have you. So I mean, he's just gonna make that go even further. Yeah. Oh yeah. Originally, we had added when we initially got in the Hearthstone, we we signed Innovation, and. He then put two two de like developmental pieces around him, thinking that that was going to be uh, the core group, and it, and it has been because that's that's who we've sent to tournaments in the last year. And both Rennie said, Manny Show and Innovation have 
while we haven't been getting the solid top 32, top 16 finishes that we were hoping for, uh, Run has developed a ton. Like, and uh, she's an absolute. She's a unit now in Hearthstone. Like she, yeah. she can grind out legend. She can place well in like she, we're talking about going positive. I think at DreamHack Austin last year she went like two and seven. Um, that was her her very first tournament, and now she's like four five five four in, in that ballpark where Manny Show and Manny or Manny Show and Innovation are now like that six three conversation when we talk about nine rounds of Swiss play, and now we're adding Villain who. Uh, He's the guy who helped Language Hacker, who's one of the more famous Canadian Hearthstone, competitive Hearthstone players. He helped Language Hacker prep for the World Championships that just happened recently. And I think Language Hacker placed like top eight, I think, at Worlds. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, yeah. yeah, so like, we're adding a, ver- a very smart, very talented veteran player to, to elevate the roster even further. And so we're just really excited to see where the roster goes from here. So obviously, um, you know, there's, there's a certain amount of... Uh industry uh means of operation in scouting new players uh but just to give our audience a little bit of an insight what brought villain to our radar per se uh if, innovation. That's, if that's something we can uh, yeah, no, we, i mean we can this because this is uh, people <laughs> yeah. ask us all the time like are you guys recruiting for this game are you mm-hmm. guys doing this um to be honest villain got on my radar because innovation retweeted villain's lft tweet that's mm-hmm. how i learned about villain uh <clears throat> for the most part Hearthstone itself, unless you're a famous streamer, Hearthstone, the really talented players in Hearthstone really fly under the radar. Um, so it really takes it really takes that, oh, I know a guy type thing. Sure, uh, sure. But, it, but you also need to have the resume to back it up. So and Villain mm. obviously had that. Like his LFT tweet was the most succinct thing I've ever seen. It was basically, I qualified for Vegas. There's only so many spots. I'm I'm good. I uh, I would love to represent an organization because uh, Blizzard Activision is not providing like any travel assistance at all, like not even to the Grand Masters. Uh, it's a really it's a really tough situation right now for Hearthstone esports for like the esports of Hearthstone. Uh, but to that end, Blizzard is posting up some pretty sizable price pools. So if if you're a good player, you qualify and you travel and you and you do well. Uh, Blizzard looks to be in a position to reward you for that, but the actual act of getting to these events, there's only three, there's, I think there's only three Masters Tour events this, this year, so that's going to be the uh, pl- uh, plus World Championships at the end of the year, or like early 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's essentially how it goes, like you you know a guy. In sure, and that's... I mean, word, word of mouth always, you know, speaks highly and having someone you have, there to vouch for you. When you have someone vouch for you, that's a big deal. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, if you all, uh, you viewers at home, would like to welcome Villain to the uh, hashtag RBG fam, feel free to find him on Twitter at capital HS underscore capital V and Villain. I actually think he's changed it to at RBG underscore Villain. A- I'm looking th- at it right now. I <laughs> think he's- oh, okay. When, when, he, when, he, when he and I talked, when he and I talked on Monday, he's like, "Do you want sure, me to do? Sure. Do you do you want me to do that?" I'm like, I, "Dude, I'm not gonna tell you to do it." Innovation and Run and Manny did it, but it's not like a requirement. Right. They just they just wanted to be like pro org. And he's like, it's it's free like, internet point real estate though. And he's and he's like, dude, I'm a team player. I'll do it. I'm like, all right, <laughs> all right, let's do it. Right, all right, right. This awesome. <laughs> yeah. well, right. Yes, dear viewer, please do go give uh, villain a warm welcome to the RBG fam, and I'm sure we'll be seeing more of him as uh, you know. Hearthstone progresses. We'll keep you up to date with his tournament standings and things of that nature. Uh, continuing on just a little bit in our roster updates, we do have some conversation <coughs> that we had regarding our Apex Legends team. So yeah. Like to take that away. So um, we are looking to possibly make an adjustment on the squad uh, because we're still kind of waiting for actual pro scene to come out uh so we feel that this is the perfect time to create some adjustments and i've talked to a few of the players and they feel that we do need to change and we'll probably make an announcement sometime really soon uh hopefully next week and we'll have that new announcement of the the brand new squad but we are still interested in picking up possibly a b team second team 
so we're still uh looking around there and everything even the players on the team are even throwing some players in my direction saying hey these guys would be good for a b team uh so it's really cool to have the players even interacting with trying to build the second squad even though the second squad could technically be competition they they like that because you know you have practice buddies now and you'll have people that you can kind of bounce ideas back and forth from and look at replays back and forth so they're pretty excited about that um we're just finalizing some stuff and once we get uh pen to paper we'll make that announcement excellent we'll be very much look forward to it always uh always welcoming a new addition to that BR scene that's so hot and so competitive right now. And I know Apex is really fit to be uh, quite an event for that. So looking forward to see RBG represented within that space for certain. Uh, moving on to some of our rosters that are currently in competition. Uh, our Rocket League team that we discussed last month with their uh, addition to the RBG Esports family. Uh, they've been making some waves out there in some tournaments recently. Um, there was DreamHack qualifiers recently, yes, and also some of the uh, Rival Series first matches. Yep. Uh, we've had three matches in league play for Rival Series, and we've played through uh, the open and close qualifiers for DreamHack Dallas. Um, DreamHack was a fairly mixed result. Uh, we It was a exciting but kind of a bummer, too, bummer moment as yeah. well, because our open qualifier... Um, one of the players was actually ill, and they played a 2v3 in round one, I think. And that's against tournament rules. So DreamHack got wind of it, DQ'd them, and was like, yo, you can't do that. Even though they won, even though they won being down a man. Right. Voluntarily. Right. Rules are rules, though. You even know. though they won down a man. It was like, rules are rules, and you can't do that. So if you can get your, if your third will play, you can, uh, go, you can, you can continue in the loser's bracket. And this is a bummer too because Galaka, the the rival series substitute, uh, was not on the roster for DreamHack. He chose to uh, play the qualifier with uh, some friends instead. Mm. So we didn't we didn't we didn't have this up. We didn't anticipate needing it. So uh, they played through the losers bracket and won out, but because of the format of the closed qualifier, that put them in the lower bracket for the closed. So they sure. they. Well, it's a double elimination. They they basically start with a loss, and we had anticipated playing U ninety because U ninety got matched up with Cloud Nine, but we didn't realize U ninety had uh, dis- had changed their roster <laughs> for DreamHack. Uh, <laughs> so the roster surprise. <laughs> the roster they announced recently is not the roster that played the qualifier. Um, they actually tried to qualify with nor playing uh, rival series. <laughs> it, yeah, well, no, they also, I mean, the roster that played in the DreamHack qualifier for U90 um, was basically Democat, Shadow, and First Killer. Uh, the addition of, basically everyone in competitive Rocket League knows who First Killer is, and he's he's, a, he's an absolute hoss for how young he is. Uh, and they upset U90, or they upset Cloud9. There's, the rumor on the block is Cloud9 was not taking the qualifier as seriously as they probably could have or should have. Um but we played Cloud9 and took a, a 3-1 off of them in the losers round one. So, like, that's that's a huge... While we as an org try to, like, be humble and, and uh, do go about the business the right way and, <clears throat> and be, like, good sportsmanship and all that stuff, that was that was a real hype moment yeah. for, for us. To, having Cloud9 tweet out that uh, that we knocked them out of the bracket was, was an amazing feeling, especially for uh, Rapid Aeon and Astro. Um, but we ended up losing in round three. We 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 took down Cloud9, 3-1. In round two, we took out Afterthought, uh, which was uh, Time Not Tyler, uh, Hato, and... or Yeah, Hato? Yeah, Hato and, Hato and Shock, I believe. Took them out 3-0. We swept them 3-0, and then we actually ended up losing to Ghost, uh, 3-1. Which it still was a fairly close series. I think there wasn't a match with a goal differential of two of more than two. Yeah, so it was, like, all it was close still, games. Yeah, it was still fairly close games. Um, <clears throat> with a team that, that was... definitely Ghost was not messing around. Like they like they were in a position where they were not going to get the auto bid for our LCS play. So like they were going, they were trying for sure. Uh, and to to lose a close series, well, it was a bummer. Um, and I know the guys were pretty beat up about it because they felt like they could have won. Uh, 
still, I mean, fairly good showing. Rival, rival series teams are not expected to beat our LCS teams for the most part. And we took down one and got kept it close with, with another one. So we'll be, it was a still... stacked bracket overall too. It oh was yeah. A crazy yeah. grind, especially like starting in the lower bracket. They had to have won so many games in a row mm-hmm. consecutively. Yeah. Uh, if we had started, in, if we had started in the winner's bracket, it probably would, we probably would have had a similar path as the dudes. The dudes actually made it all the way to the finals against NRG. So good for them. Yeah, but we 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 definitely probably could have had a a similar a similar path, and could have gotten the uh, the free trip. But we're going regardless. Yeah, we'll, and we'll be there. With regards to the way that we played against Cloud Nine, I mean, it's one thing to say that like, okay, sure, maybe they weren't trying their hardest because they figured, okay, we'll probably get the the auto bid for a dream hack. Uh, but I imagine if they're down two games in a best of five they're still going to be trying to play to win and our guys were able to hang with them. So, I mean, we are super proud of what oh, yeah. our roster is doing currently. So, Swan, you can go ahead and talk us through the, the rival series, how we're doing. Oh yeah. I mean, we're currently two and one. Um, we had an unfortunate, we took, we took an unfortunate sweep with plot twist. It, <laughs> Mectos, Pirates and Taroko is a like, that's a good roster. And Taroko has been like the RBG Kryptonite. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, it hurts since so we, bad. Since we, I was been, watching that one. For RBG yeah. Since we've not. been in competitive Rocket League as, <laughs> as like fielding a team, Taroko has just been he's been our Kryptonite. And yeah. He played he played phenomenally, and we ended up. I mean, it was three three games, all one goal differential. It wasn't like a, we didn't get blown out, but it still hurts. Well, and it was a um, bummer because it was our first match too yeah in the I rlrs mean, the f- because we didn't play any in the first week the first match though is the hardest at that point yes. that was our first match and most teams had played two if not three three matches so uh we were able to take back games or take take wins off of u90 and um the dudes who we just said took the, had that amazing run played nrg in the finals um for dreamhack so we, like, we took down dudes we have afterthought embers uh, the peeps and birds and the bees still have to play, so it's a pretty pretty beastly schedule remaining. But um, I, I to me, if we can hang with RLCS, there's no like going four zero on the rest of our schedule isn't out of question to me. Yeah, uh, it's it's certainly doable, and I think the peeps and birds and the bees know that. So we'll see uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm looking for yeah. I'm looking forward to. It. There's a, there's a real possibility RBG can be in top two, and that's Gee. that is exciting. to be fair um (laughs) before the podcast i actually took a lot of notes uh (laughs) about what yeah randomized wanted to break the whole thing down he's he's (laughs) got like you know that meme of always sunny in philadelphia where he's got like the whole Uh thing that's that's random right now (laughs) (laughs) what happens what'll what could happen in in rival series for the remaining two weeks so oh yeah i mean just like i i'm 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 like Gibbs. I love looking at the statistics and finding out, trying to predict and see where things go. And just, you know, like what Swan said, we're, we're in a good run right now. Um, some quick scenarios, basically. We need to shoot the top two if we want to go for the promotional tournament to get into RLCS. And to honestly do that, we would have to, Swan and, and I and the players, we were, Talking about it with the players a little bit. Swan just said, no, you just got to win all your games. That's it, period. But in reality, it's easy to, to win. Yeah, to get the top two, though, they pretty much have to win all their games. And if the only thing they're allowed to do is lose one match against a team and only allowed to drop two games. So at that point, from all the math I've done, they would have to literally win all the matches. And if they lost to maybe Peeps, they're only allowed to drop two games, and then the rest of the matches have to be uh, 3-0s to guarantee a top two. It's kind of a scary situation, and it really just comes down to that plot twist uh, sweep where we just got wrecked by them. They didn't give us the numbers we wanted. You know, games won to loss were 6-5, and five, while uh, plot twist is 10-9, and nine and peeps are 11-7. and seven. So it's... Um, it's a little scary situation. We could, e- I, I'm guaranteeing that we will be sitting in top four because I also did the math for all the other players, and it's looking like Afterthought and U90 are most likely going to stay in bottom because they're 
it's week we're going into week four and they've already both lost four games dudes are right there with them they've lost three games so embers can't drop another game if they drop one more which we're versing them and uh we plan to win but um <laughs> it's always if, the plan uh, yeah but um if they lose one that that's it they're bottom four as well so then it just really comes down to uh embers afterthoughts dudes and u90 they're probably gonna sit bottom four like i just said it's going to really come down to how plot twist is going to play out the rest of the time, how we're going to play and how peeps are going to do. I mean, birds and bees are doing amazing. I don't see them dropping another. I can't see them really drop in that many matches. If they're going to drop, they're going to drop maybe one or two. And I'm hoping one of them is us because they're four and zero in the season right now. So they're doing beyond fantastic. I mean, even looking at the buys, uh, they can really affect the game. The reason why we're so far behind is because we had a buy first week. Uh, week two, nobody had to buy. Week three, birds and bees, they sat this week. They got to watch, but they had to look. But week four and week five is going to look scary because Afterthought and Plot Twist have a buy. And then week five, U90, you know, you're already sitting at the bottom, and now you have to sit out and watch. And then Peeps has a buy. So that's our opportunity to pretty much take uh, take the last spot of the top two. It's just hoping we do well in week four and then. If peeps play bad week four, they have to sit and twiddle their thumbs while we move in. So uh, right, that's right. that's the situation. <laughs> well, it certainly is a promising result that we could see RBG in the top two, but it sounds like there will be a gauntlet to run in the meantime. Mm-hmm. Certainly wish uh, gauntlet. <laughs> gauntlet. <laughs> gauntlet. Gauntlet. What's a gauntlet? <laughs> but certainly wishing the uh, RBG lads good luck there out on yeah. the pitch. Now. Uh, Swan, you already have had a chance to talk a little bit about villain in qualification for the Hearthstone, you know, world tournaments. Is there any further update that you might want to give, uh, to our audience, especially to someone who maybe isn't versed as well in the Hearthstone pro scene, as far as where he stands and where he, uh, you know, his aims to go. I know you, you already gave, uh, kind of a passing mention to it, but if you might explain just a little bit more, like what it would require to get into, uh, the qualifications. Yeah, so to qualify for the Masters Tour, it's um, top 200 legend in the previous portion. Uh, mm-hmm. So, like, if you're prepping for Asia, if you qualify to play in the tournament, in the in the legend tournament for Asia, you have to basically be top 200 legend the, the period prior. So during the Open Cups for Vegas, if you make top 200 legend, you qualify for an, another tournament during the Asia Open Cups to then, if you place top four in that, you get an invite to the Masters Tour. Uh, And so during the, if you finish top 200 legend during the Open Cups for Asia, if you you find you end in top 200 legend, you could then play in a tournament prepping for Europe. You've placed top four and that kind of stuff. So they basically, instead of it just being open to open sign up events, like it has been uh, back when it was the Hearthstone Championship Tour, uh, you basically just like we would go to events. So if you wanted points, you would uh, do what we did. We you would go to DreamHack and play in the uh, the the championship the championship the Grand Prix stuff. You would go to random venues. Uh, I think there was like one per region every month or like every two months. They're, they would rotate region, and you would go like we went to Oakland. Um, the heart the entire I uh, myself innovation runny said and Manny Show. We flew out to Oakland and played in a HCT event. Um, there were plenty of players that were, you would fly out to Taipei. You would fly, uh, Innovation actually made a trip out to Oslo <laughs> to play in a, in a tournament event to just get those tour points. Mm-hmm. Um, they basically removed tour points and there's basically 240 open cups and you have to win the cup to get an invite. Um, other than that, there's really no. Uh, you earn pack card packs and things like that uh, as a reward for where you place. But um, what used to be like a really vibrant uh, tournament scene uh, with lots of opportunity to travel and lots of opportunity to meet other players and things like that, it's been reduced to basic, a purely online process for the most part. So sure. it's kind of just it's kind of disheartening. But so that's what uh, Villain has already done. He won an Open Cup leading the Vegas, and then he 
finished, I think he actually finished 138, I think is where he finished. Um, for Amer for the American region, anyway. Legend 138, I believe. Uh, so, in May, I think for May and June, he can play, he'll play in that Legend tournament, and then Innovation, Manny, and Run, and Villain will be playing as many Open Cups as they can uh, enter in. And those are those are purely open sign up. When the spots run out, they run out. So that that's kind of how competitive Hearthstone works at the moment. Um, there will be also opportunities like let's say Villain goes to he goes to Vegas and wins. Let's say he finishes. For, he, he let's say he he makes the top eight cut and he wins the on the last day. He finishes first. I think at that point he could earn an invitation into the Grand Masters Tour, which is basically like an eight-week league. Mm -hmm. Bottom two drop out, and they add two players. Okay, okay, sure. So I think there's a possibility that like he could earn his way onto onto that into that innovation could too. Um, I mean, we keep talking about villain because he's the new addition, but uh, I think Inno actually took a couple of top eight finishes in Open Cups. I know Runny said also got some top eight finishes. So like our like our the rest of the roster is by no means slouching. <laughs> it's just been a grueling process so far. No, no, certainly it sounds like there's. A lot of competition for very few spots, so you know we'll have to keep an eye on the Hearthstone players as they move forward. But it's very exciting, but also you know it's a lot of competition. That's it's a lot of pressure that I'll be very excited to see our players perform under. Um, you know I think that's part of the competitive experience. And while it does, like you say, it removes some of that tournament scene, it does definitely add some of the the urgency, shall I say, and the you know sort of proper worldwide league feel of it i suppose i suppose well yeah because so. like the monthly events the like the hgt tour stops where those were live streamed mm -hmm. uh the dreamhack grand, grand prix were also live streamed so you're you're getting the game out in front of thousands and thousands of people and they they changed the system to try and make it more streaming friendly so like the grand masters league is uh, like 100 percent streamed but it's like from player perspectives and things like that um, which there's been a lot of outcry because they basically a lot of people are basically claiming that the Grand Masters League is a streamer league. So mm -hmm. if you're not if you're not streaming Hearthstone to a, an, an average audience of like a thousand people, then you don't have a shot at being in the league. No matter how good of a player you are, is sure. what some people are saying. Uh, I don't have an opinion on it one way or the other. Um, I just know that the previous system was good competitively. And a lot of people are bummed that it's changed. <clears throat> and I kind of, I, I agree on that. I agree on that front. I, the old point system was, I thought was good. Right, right, right. Well, either way, it is the environment in which uh, players have to compete. So we'll make do with it. And I'm sure the uh, debate will rage on as ever on the uh, Hearthstone Twitter scene, which I know is very vibrant in that discussion. But Unless there are other discussions for RBG in competition, perhaps with any of our other rosters or players lately that we might want to speak of? Um, Apex guys have been playing in some small tournaments. They've been doing well. They keep making it to the finals, but literally problems just happen between cheaters or one of the players can't make it. So they're still grinding. Uh, we're still solidifying a Halo roster, but they have uh, potential players that we're going to be having play they're doing still qualifiers, so they're still getting points and everything. So the players are kind of shuffling still because some teams are having points, some players don't have points, and they want points. So you can land in the pool play right at the beginning. I think it's like top 16, get pool play right off the bat at DreamHack Dallas. But we will have a Rocket League team, a Halo team, and two, three, sorry, three, potentially three uh, Smash players. So uh, that's pretty much it for bigger events coming up at least for rbg uh, and sure. then the vegas sure. thing sorry with villain yes <laughs> i'm still getting that used little to that, that little pesky there. vegas thing that we're yeah going i'm still to. i'm still getting i'm still getting that in my head that that's actually happening <laughs> <laughs> yeah well definitely it certainly is an exciting time in rbg with all of the competition stacking up we'll look forward to seeing some results rolling in soon Mm -hmm. Lock up for this. Sanders it down to Ghost. Ghost what with three the three straight into the guard side. Thunder getting rid of Zeus. The ball is still up, and that's going oh! in. The RPG takes game one. Okay. Pull this into the center. It's an open net. 
Oh my That's god. That's a shot! Centers, ball is up, one touch to the ground will end it. Devin comes flying up, soft touch in off the crossbar. Oh, and Byron makes the score! But looking ahead, uh, beyond the scope of RBG itself and into the realm of Rocket League at whole, there was quite a big announcement that uh, Josh brought to our attention today that was Epic uh, taking control of Psyonix. I hate it. <laughs> All right. Before Tell we, me how before, you really feel. Before we destroy this, um, did, <laughs> I, I just want to confirm with the four of us have we all read that article yes so the I, article i glanced through, are you talking about the verge article the yes, yes. So I glanced, say, the article I, I glanced through it yeah the article in uh in mention here is from the website the verge entitled epic buys rocket league developer psionics strongly hints it will stop selling the game on steam yeah so to be fair to be 100 percent fair and this is something i actually knew before they even said it in the article was that Rocket League was created on the Unreal Engine, and mm -hmm. I knew that Epic had helped with that. Um, I did not know that Psyonix actually helped Epic uh, get the, the cross-console working for them. Uh, Psyonix is the company that li literally made PS4 stop, shall I say, being children and saying no we're the best we only play with ourselves now yeah, they're one of the PS4, biggest voices in breaking that isolation oh yeah and now that ps4 is like all right fine you can play with xbox people and thank you psionics kind of thing so epic you know just went like you know we we've been friends for a while we've been doing this and that why don't we just partner we'll buy you out we'll give you money we'll give you this and that and that's pretty much what it from what the article and from what i can gather that's what it sounds like now do we like it are we afraid what's going to happen? Stuff like that. I'm not too worried about the game. I'm actually more worried about the esports side. But I know we're talking about how it's going to affect players and streamers right now. Mm -hmm. um, my, my personal opinion, it, it's a hard topic to talk about without enough evidence off the bat. But I can say I don't see a lot of the game getting affected. I think, if anything, what have people been asking in the past where they've been saying, hey, can we get new game modes? Can modding, you know, become the real thing? People have been creating volleyball mods and you know, hide and seek. Like, I feel yeah, like Epic is going to... Yeah, I feel like <laughs> Epic is going to be able to go, all right, let's take their idea and put it in your game. You, you don't have a lot of social games. So now that they have Epic's stuff, I feel like they're going to be able to literally stop with the whole, well, we don't have enough database or enough servers to blah, blah, blah. It's going to be able to spike up. I'm scared that because Epic has had big fails in the middle of their own qualifiers and tournaments where uh, servers just started lagging in the middle of their games, I'm scared that's going to start happening to us. If Or, like, I, I say us as Rocket League players. Um, I'm scared that's going to happen. Otherwise, I, I don't really see it's going to affect the game itself generally. I, I, I feel they're just going to maybe add some things, you know, Epic is known to put a new thing in an update in the middle of a tournament uh, for Fortnite, and it's getting people to go insane where they're like, stop it. We get it. Like you want to keep in innovating the game, but there's only so much you can do in a certain time period when we're in the middle of trying to win your $30 million. And you're like, Hey, by the way, take a bat and start whacking people in the head with it. They're like what? <laughs> I wasn't expecting this weapon. Oh, by the way, hamster ball. Okay. Go flying. Oh, by the way, Avengers are in the middle of your tournament? Sure, why not? Start swinging the sword at people. Like, that is not good esports. And I'm scared that something like that could happen to Rocket League. But, if anything, Epic's going to teach Rocket League hot fixes and patching quicker. <laughs> they, they did that once when they made a mistake where they fixed a glitch that they knew should stay in the game. They hot patched it right away. When was the last time we saw that again? <laughs> so maybe that's something Epic can help, and I think that can affect our re regular players and streamers. Do you guys have anything else before we actually start dabbling into the esports scene? I okay, I'm going to say something. The go reason why it. I hate the why, the reason why I hate this, and when Fox <laughs> <we> <laughs> and when Fox McCumulus hears that 
here's this. His he's gonna crawl out of his skin. <laughs> I hate this purely because purely due to the idea that I may have to open up the epic the epic launcher. Okay. You won't though. I won't. I won't have to open up the no, epic they, launcher. No, they've confirmed that if you own the game on Steam, it will continue to You'll be, be supported able to on use Steam it forever. Oh, so really this yeah. Can't. So this has been like a series of like realizations okay, that the community good. has been having that, over time I, today. Yeah. I thought I saw that in the uh, in the Verge article, but I it wasn't also... in the Verge article. It wasn't. Good. No, and Psyonix okay. later clarified. Yeah. Well, it was uh, well, kind of like it was kind of up in the I, air. I think in the Verge article. I believe at the end of the article there was a, a footnoted citation that they had gone back and uh, that could like, be yeah, refreshed they... their position. So that might okay. have been you know yeah because I just I saw a tweet hour. <laughs> I saw a tweet okay. from Psyonix saying like hey we heard you all like. Freaked freaking out. <laughs> out about this like we just want to let you know if you own the game on steam right now right. and if you purchase it before it leaves steam you will get all of the dlcs you'll get all of the updates it will continue to be uh updated on steam for you so it'll continue to be supported uh That's so that sure. that won't be an issue so um, we can still purchase i do think via steam if a new for DLC now, comes until in. until it's the been merge happens, basically, that there will be a time in the future where Rocket League will only be available through the Epic Store to purchase. Um, that is not confirmed in any sort of declaration by Psyonix or Epic. Yeah, League. see, my my biggest concern about that in reality is, uh, for example, the Switch. Right. So I play Rocket League on the Switch once in a while when I'm at my girlfriend's house, and that's all I got to play with. Uh, but I wanted to get the Dominus. I I actually hate the fact that like I switch back to Dominus. I'm loving it, and then I go to play on the Switch, and I can't play in the Dominus because the way I, I guess Psionics and Nintendo just didn't talk, and they have all these cars and all the battle cars that you can buy, but they forgot to put the Dominus in. You can go into the showroom, click the Dominus, and then it goes switch to Nintendo eShop. You go over. There's no Dominus. So really, like, I I cannot play the Dominus huh. on the Switch. It kills me. I hate it. Dang! I'm, now you can't play messes... competitively on the Switch. Oh no! But yeah, <laughs> but no, like it. But that's something. I'm. That's the biggest word. I yeah. The Epic thing is gonna suck. Yeah, of course. Everyone I, hates I you know that stuff. But like, what what does that my, happen to us? In my glancing of the Verge article, they made it seem like the game is going to be if you already own it on Steam. You will be like they'll service the game through Steam. Like you can get troubleshoot, you can get support, you can troubleshoot. Um, they also made it seem like you would have access to the DLC. So what they'll probably do, if I were Psionix, and we're gonna operate under the you know, under the guise that while Epic owns Psionix, Psionix is maintaining control of Rocket League and is yeah. being able to make decisions. Basically, Epic is gonna just say, "Look, you just can't sell." The base game on steam so they'll probably just remove the base game for sale from steam and then as dlc comes out they'll put it on the steam store and so oh. we we as that makes sense. people who own the game through steam can purchase the dlc whenever unless they basically work it out with steam <clears throat> to have our steam key basically grant us copies of the game on epic I, that'd be bizarre to me but that's, I don't the know, if they fix, can, that's the only other fix I could think of. Yeah, if they can figure out a way to transfer our accounts, whatever. I mean, in reality, a business... Uh, I know we're not here to talk about the business of esports, even though I love listening to that podcast. Um, in reality, the business of that is stupid smart. You know, Epic buys Psyonix, and it has Rocket League. Epic has its own launcher, so if you buy the game through Epic Launcher, you don't have to just outsource any of that money towards Steam or sure, anything. Sure. It's just straight... It's like, hey, you want to pay $30 for the game? Guess what? We got all thirty dollars. We didn't have to pay well, yeah. Steam ten dollars. That's, $10. that's so why things like Origin exist. And, right, right. Yeah. So I think it's a smart uh, idea. It's gonna be. I, I think it's this, gonna be fine. If this yeah. means, if this means that we get that Fortnite money into Rocket League, I'm yes. good with it too. Yeah. So I'm gonna play devil's advocate on a few things. So one, you were talking about like the the hot fixing, uh, and how like Epic Games had made updates for Fortnite in the middle of like a tournament sort of situation but psionix has kind of done that too they've like broken their game right before major tournaments before. but they fixed it but they fixed they it. did fix it 
But that, I'm just saying, like, we're already though. getting that without Epic Games. It's not something right. that's unique to Epic Games. And sure. I think mm-hmm. almost every developer does things like that. Um, but the, the rate at which they fix the things that they break is very important, too. Um, so what Swan just touched on, the the financial resources that will become available to, uh, I guess, the Rocket League arm of Epic Games... Uh, I can see that being huge for the game. Uh, oh, yeah. For one, getting better <laughs> servers potentially, that affects literally everybody, yeah. and that would make me want to play the game so much more because it's so tilting getting into a match and floating around the server yeah, when you're connected to servers. a 200 <laughs> megabyte per second yeah connection. This, like it's just so frustrating. If this acquisition. Spazzing. If this acquisition removes virtual the idea of virtual servers oh. in Rocket League, I'll be a very happy member. Yes. Camper. Yeah. Well, I think I think this makes a very natural transition point that uh, I would like to talk a little bit. You know, in terms of that infrastructure side, like you mentioned, Kyle, um, for Epic Games in the esports scene with Rocket League, um, I think this offers a very opportune moment for them on a production side. Uh, I'm not saying that Psyonix has not put on a wonderful show with RLCS. Um, but Epic Games is in the middle of putting on a hundred million dollar Fortnite World Cup. They're getting this down to a science of how to put on a show for hours on end, uh, how to get talent, how to get studios, how to get, um, bigger and bigger and, you know, more intense prize pools. And I think that could be a really good thing for Rocket League, a game that is already, grown a huge competitive scene that already has proven itself as a at least you know barring our comments two minutes ago a relatively stable platform the game has not changed incredibly drastically you know and in the time it's been out it's been car soccer you know we've had plenty of adjustments and skills and in you know the metas and things of that nature but I think Epic has an opportunity here to take Rocket League to sort of an exponential <coughs> higher level at least in terms of production quality and competition for prize pools. Now, I'm, I'm curious I'm, how you all think that'll impact uh, the rest of the esports scene with it. I'm going to take you there, and I'm going to say the money-wise is going to be nice for the competitive side of Rocket League. Uh, being able to have more money, put more money into prize pools, uh, probably bigger, better productions, even though the productions have been honestly amazing. They can go way out of their way. In my opinion... If Epic touches any, and I'm saying if Epic touches any way of the format of Rocket League, Psyonix right there needs to stop it. That if they let them touch any of the format of esports, Psyonix is going to start losing people. And the reason why I say that is because there is so much contradiction, there's so much argument, so many debates, so many fights going on all over the air, all over the place. I have listened to Oh, I can't imagine how many episodes of podcasts of other, you know, multiple podcasts of people talking over multiple episodes, talk, reading articles, listening to players on streams on how many people are actually very upset with the esports of Fortnite. Uh, and I say that because one, just a big prize pool doesn't automatically mean you just put on a great tournament. No. Right. Right. You yeah. still have to administer it. <laughs> like I said, the fact that uh, Epic is still doing their updates every month and adding things. You know, imagine this. Imagine, Swan, you didn't qual- uh, you qualified week one, and I couldn't play week one. But if we both played, we probably could have qualified. Now, week two comes along. Kyle hasn't played week one. He plays week two, and the Avengers Sword, which one swing kills you, is now in the game. Guess what? That has literally happened in... Uh, Epic's esports literally between week one and week two of the solo duos, you know, because it's it's week one solo, week one duo, week two solo, week two duo, right? Between those have been different weapons, which changes the meta, and that's a big problem. And that's why I'm saying if Epic touches Psionics's esports format, that is going to be a big problem, in my opinion. If anything, Epic should help Psionics build bigger with money. Give them better revenue, help them get a bigger place where we can get more people to come out and, you know, find more ways to 
get more teams involved, maybe use the money to help out Asia a little bit better, get them better productions, build their side more. South America, because we're, we're obviously they're trying to get Asia in. South America is in. Build it. Build, 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 build. Get more teams to come out. F- figure out a way to handle more than just uh, four, eight, uh, I guess 12 to 16 teams in a grand finals. Figure out a way to allow people to have a venue from Thursday to Sunday so that we can have more teams in the finals. Use the money that way. If you can have North America, EU, uh, South America, and Asia, and if we can even reach out to maybe like CIS region, get those people in. I, I dropped, I, I forgot o- Oceanic, my bad. But even that, like just right there, we already have four in. We're about to get a fifth one next season from what the rumors are going. Get another one in, like Russia's, like CIS. Get them in. We're going to have an amazing eSport. Rocket League will be flying. We'll be taking over names left and right. But if Epic touches anything on the format, it's going to go the complete opposite way. And that is my personal opinion. Uh, you guys I, may have something else. I, no, I mean, I agree with it strictly because with, with Rocket League being the game it is, you can basically you can almost classify it as a sports simulator, and I hate saying that, but it is a sportish game. It's modeled yeah. after soccer slash hockey slash football to a degree with demos and whatnot. It's <laughs> it's got a very sports nature to it, which lends itself to the casting style that most people use in it, to how tournaments are structured, things like that. Um, the Fortnite model for like weekly qualifiers or like their seat. I have always hated how Fortnite esports operate, and I've tried to. Dan is even that one Dan guy has tried to coach me on like how it functions. How do we how do we gauge players? What metric should we be looking at? Uh, how does the season function? Uh, these things aren't openly described really, as far as mm. I've been able to tell, until we've gotten the World <laughs> Cup that actually has a very very precise and long winded rules section. Yes, uh, but the current method for Rocket League. Whether whether you do group stage tournaments or just do double elimination brackets or even even if you do Swiss play, um, Psionics the to me Psionics needs to maintain maintain control of the product and its production, use money from Epic to enhance price pool, enhance production because we've talked a great deal about like oh RLCS looks really good, Renegade Cup looked terrible. The Renegade Cup production for both EU and for North America was pretty abysmal. Uh, uh, not, not it was, uh, it was bad. <laughs> like there was a full day that wasn't streamed, and games were just the game results were just being tweeted. You not remember that? Yeah, there was uh, no, there was no stream. So, uh, Psionics did, and that's the thing. Psionics didn't actually produce the Renegade Cup show. They outsourced it to a media company in, in Canada. Uh, so like Samuel and Lethemir and the caster, the casters were fine. It was literally the the assets they had for production with cameras and and technology that they used. Uh, so if Sionis gets that bonus money, gets all that extra Fortnite money, and gets better price pools, builds better infrastructure for each for every region, uh, is able to expand uh, infrastructure for tournaments for uh, production. That's all that is going to just benefit Rocket League, yeah. and those are things I look forward to. Yeah. Um, One other thing. Oh, go ahead. oh, sorry. No, no, no. You were in the middle. No, I was about to. I was just going to make a joke about opening the Epic Launcher again. Oh, perfect. Uh, <laughs> One more thing that I good think we cut him off. is good that could come from this. Yeah, right. One more thing that I think that's good that could come from this is if you are a content creator or like a, a big streamer for Rocket League. Uh, Epic Games does have the support a creator system uh, in which it allows the big name people who play their game uh, to make money off of just uh, people supporting them. Uh, Their viewers sign up to support the creator and whenever they buy like a certain threshold amount of V-Bucks, that creator gets a certain amount of money and i think that that is really good for the community because it's giving back to the community that's keeping your game alive uh so hopefully that's something that's transferable over to rocket league creator codes that give payouts for how many esports tokens you buy Ooh, yeah definitely. 
again, that's in, that's go. an infrastructure that Epic <laughs> has experience with, and that they would have the ability to execute should they decide. And that's a direction we've already seen Rocket League move in in the last few weeks. And Psionics yeah. should, you know, put a RLRS team on the yeah, you <laughs> not just for us. Not just for not us. Not just for like, us. I mean, you have like something f- like complexity. Complexity and is Barcelona. not in the True. Yeah. Yeah. Barcel- you know, Barcelona is if they're not in, they're close. It's not they're not in yet. I the mean, the other R- the remaining RLCS teams in North America and EU are basically finalizing like IP rights and things like that to get yeah. their decals in. Mm-hmm. Um but Psionics has already said that OCE is being added to uh I think next season. Um so like and I don't know they didn't really announce this on like how they're going to be doing this. Is the esports store going to be active year round, or is it just during le- is it just during the season? There is no. From what I've researched, I've actually looked that up. I wanted to find out how the rotations are going to go. Uh, from what I heard, there's, or from what I've read, there's really nothing out there explaining how long the store is going to go. I thought. From how it sounded, it seemed like it was just going to be a seasonal thing, but not season of RLCS, but like season pass, where they'll just rotate it with the season pass. So when the season pass is done, then the esports store is down. Then when season pass four comes on, then the esports store will come back on. That's what it's from what I've gathered. That's kind of what it looks like. I, but I'm going to be honest. I don't want to go off just rumors that I've been going yeah. off. I, yeah. I, yeah, we'll, I would like. We'll have to I do some more like, on research. I would like an announcement from Sionix on like what their yes. plans are for that because okay. if uh, I depend because we've already talked about what our Riley team can do, but if they if they get top four and they're going to be in rival series or better next season, um, getting some of that getting some of that esports money would help out the lads quite a bit. <laughs> For yeah. certain. Well, I'm sure, as you said, we will see some updates from Psionic, or Psionics and or <coughs> Epic here yeah. in the uh, near future as their deal finalizes and they get approval from the uh, powers that be in uh, the regulation of these companies. But moving forward, unless anyone has any burning, uh, burning jokes they have to get through here <laughs> one more time with the Epic Store. Not really a joke, but like... <laughs> So Jane Apps for G2, he he tweeted out, he said, just a joke, he said, I don't know why these teams are letting the ball in the net just build, lol. <laughs> and I think that, like, adding Fortnite building to Rocket League would actually <laughs> be a pretty fun extra thing, game would, mode. Uh, I think that would be sick. That, that's a really good rumble modifier. Uh, yeah. Like a rumble power. Uh, that's speak. good. That's okay, actually. Speaking yeah. of rumble, man. Just, uh, Uh-oh. It, today's challenges included playing five <laughs> rumble matches and for those oh five boy. matches i suffered because i never played rumble so i was playing in gold plat and lower territory and i was just crying yep. <laughs> but that's another story all right let's move on speaking <laughs> of Fortnite, i don't know if dan wanted to take the segue oh yeah, yeah. no no you're good uh yeah sorry i just wanted to write that down because i know we're gonna get tweeted uh tweet storm if somebody sees that and they care about Fortnite. avengers sword is not a thing <laughs> there was a sword now there's the avengers but the big point that you hit that i love you for saying that you are 100 percent there on is the uh addition of guns changing the meta in between weeks totally cued in on yeah, that totally pissed why, off. but that just proves PUBG. to you that i don't play yeah. Fortnite because no I, for sure for sure i knew there was a sword that, you know, i knew the avengers announcement but but you're you're still right the fact that even you who like don't play Fortnite picked up on how f-ed some of that stuff was totally so speaking once more about epic games and their position in the esports world we as rbg esports are interested in getting involved in the world cup and in the world of competitive Fortnite in general so for Fortnite, we are currently looking for either a solo contender or a duo pair to come together or to piecemeal. And or uh, both. We are definitely, yes, and or both. Uh, we are definitely in the market for Fortnite players. So as we spoke about before, that word of mouth goes a long way. If you know someone that is LFT and that is in contention uh, for these open tournaments to qualify for the World Cup, We would be very interested in hearing about it, either reaching out to us again on Twitter or on Discord uh, as you're watching this video, wherever you may find it. Check your links below for our social media. Feel free to 
Comment either with an up-and-coming esports player that you think RBG should give a look to, or simply with a comment. Perhaps weigh in on our Rocket League debate here, or uh, some of our new additions to the org. Feel free to reach out to us on those socials. But again, we are still actively recruiting for Fortnite in a solo or duo capacity. Uh, we are here for some Rainbow Six Siege action. We're looking to break into the competitive scene there. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 still has opportunity for competitive play in RBG Esports future. Uh, specifically looking for something local to the New Jersey tri-state area. It says local to tri-state area, but that's because there's a certain somebody who is a diehard fan of the tri-state area. Um, and if there is a team out there like in Texas or like anywhere close to Texas, like well, I'm down to look. <laughs> we have a new uh, diehard fan that we're uh, willing and uh, ready to activate. To explain why we are looking for possibly New Jersey tri-state area people is because there are not one, not two, but three different uh, TOs that host multiple, multiple Black Ops 4 tournaments, 5v5s and 2v2s over at Helix Esports. Uh, NJ, Rod, King of the Couch, I guess he still calls, and ETG in New York City. So we are looking for players to go to those events. So that point is, is why. The point <laughs> is, we're interested in Black Ops. And if we you are uh, if you are LFT, so join. or or if you're a CWL team that wants an org, come talk to us. Hmm. Indeed, indeed. And we still are interested in Old Faithful PUBG there, rounding out towards the bottom of our list with the addition of sports games that we are always open to consideration uh, i presume that that being madden fifa things of that nature to yep. uh and nba 2k probably uh no not nba 2k no okay. that's being ran by the nba oh that's right oh yeah, it's, it's that's, such that's a hard a, way to get into it that is a property deal of nba they uh, yeah, running that, that league. That, that's so much harder to get into yeah you're right <laughs> eh, never mind well no it's impossible to get into because the the teams are being ran by nba teams uh, like yeah. you get three players you get three players on a roster and they they're part of like it's so like the mavericks esports or like the la clippers esports it's just yeah. their nba it's their nba 2k roster but well, at least we don't have to deal with fighting yeah in rbg yikes, yikes. definitely madden though especially since we're going to dreamhack dallas there is a dreamhack madden event it's looking pretty pretty big pretty stacked so if you're into competitive madden and want to go to dreamhack Come, uh, come give us a come give us a holler <laughs> well just to round it up one more time for you here we'll walk it down Fortnite solos and duos we're interested rainbow six siege we are interested in a team call of duty black ops 4 we are still looking to get into the scene PUBG. we would like to continue our interest there and madden fifa or another applicable sports game feel free to reach out to us at twitter uh at, at rbg underscore esports in the discord in the links below in general now i think gents if we are comfortable with it it's time to move into our viewer questions portion of the podcast unless you have any final thoughts from uh any of our previous segments i'm good ready to go yeah all right all right well community staple jakester sent in a question for us this month he asked how is the rl team feeling going into week four of rlrs We've definitely already broken down the uh, competitive standings, but uh, just on an emotional level, how do you guys feel there? I mean, mm. the players, they, they're ready to go. Um, I believe the next games they're playing are Ember and Afterthought. Uh, I don't think they're Friday, too worried about... Friday and Saturday, yeah. Yeah, Friday and Saturday. I don't think they... They don't seem too worried about Ember. Um, I, I feel like we are definitely a squad that can take them on and they 3-0'd afterthought and dreamhack like we said earlier so I, i'm sure they're feeling comfortable we're feeling comfortable so yeah scrim results for the roster have been really good so far this season um the tournament results have been pretty 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 good pretty standard um on top of because we didn't talk about this in during the like in competition conversation we, we focused on dreamhack and league play they also played in the they also played in the Team Beyond um, Astro 2K tournament oh, yeah, uh, right. this past Monday. They made it to semis. They ended up losing to uh, Dapper. Was it Dapper Miho and someone else? Yeah, they went by like some team name. LOL, but it was like yeah. two X pros and uh, an RLRS player. Yeah, um, still it was a fairly decent roster. They just it was a bad break. Um, the games, I th yeah. 
I didn't get to, I didn't get to watch the tournament, but the results seemed fairly close. And uh, they they were Rocket Daily was, was one of their one of their yeah. Plays. It was a, it was a 4-0 sweep, but they got a they had a phenomenal team play in that game four that made it onto Rocket mm-hmm. Dailies. Oh, yeah. so pretty. <laughs> they, oh, yeah. They're 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 in a good mental place. They they're ready to just finish the season and see where they land. Um, yeah, Rapid has also been dealing with a broken controller. I bought him a new one, and we're just waiting for a controller freak to send in the grips that he needs for it, and then. Hopefully that will help. Uh, hopefully um, they'll be able to stay calm in the middle of the games. I know Rapid has been talking to me constantly that the last 30 seconds is the hardest moment for them, and I said that's for anybody. <laughs> you know, it's just you just yeah. play. I just tell I tell them I tell everybody you play like it's zero zero on the board with five minutes left on the clock. You just play like that the whole time, and you should be fine. I, th- I think they're, they're feeling fine. Thank you, Jakester, for the question, and thank you for being such an awesome, awesome community member. Really appreciate it, man. <laughs> Appreciated, as always. All of our community members so willing to engage with us, especially in our Rocket League uh, endeavors. A new face to the podcast, uh, Racer De Beast sent in a question uh, specifically asking about any tips on how to start an esports org, and he was wondering, how did RBG get started? Yeah, um, well, this is a this is a topic that we have uh, addressed <coughs> sort of uh, before in some of our shorter segments and in some of our written content uh, that I covered, especially our year in review. Uh, we took a bit of a deeper dive into the roots of RBG. Uh, but if you all, you know, uh, Michael and Josh and I mean, Kyle, I know you've been in on this the entire time, too, from from the groundwork. Um, Almost. If we could get a, a little bit of a TLDR <laughs> version of uh, how RBG came to be. Um, I mean, TLDR, basically, Swan and I, uh, we were the head of a gaming part of our fraternity, FAMU Alpha Symphonia. Uh, we've been ahead of the stream team. We decided we needed to build the stream up, so we hosted a tournament, or I guess a league for brothers. Did two seasons, it went successful. Kyle kind of jumped along with us to help us out with that stuff, and so did Dan. Won the second season, and, just saying. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> After <laughs> eight hours of a freaking final match, <laughs> best You're of all, seven. You were, you were also the, like the only GC in the league. So. Uh, sh- well, Jared was champ two, three, three? So that's fine. Yeah, he was right there. Again, um, the only GC. Most of us could spell okay, champ. Fine. <laughs> most of us could spell champ. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so basically, um, we kind of just did that for the brothers, and we've had people come in and out of the streams, and they were like, oh, I want to get a part of this, blah, blah, blah. So Swan and I kind of looked at each other uh, via cameras, I guess, <laughs> and said, why don't we make this public? Let's, we originally were going to start kind of as a just a TO, just hosting events, but then we're like, no, let's actually, let's, let's pick up a squad. And uh, that's the TLDR of how RBG started, pretty much. Um, Indeed. Indeed. Any it was, tips? Well, I was a little more involved in that too because the, I'm just doing the TLDR. The <laughs> well, starting a company the, was more involved than that. The, what? T, the TLDR was needs to be like there was like a random late night text message. Oh yeah, where, where <laughs> Random and I basically sent the same paragraph to each yeah. other. Yeah. That the culmination of that the culmination of that text was, wait, if we're gonna do this, why don't we just like explore like build up the mi- like the minor leagues of esports because that doesn't really exist like we have tournaments and consistent yeah, tournaments right. across a bunch now. of different things but it was there there's the pros but then like how do you get from scrub to pro and that that doesn't really exist and we we have that now it's, it's, six man's has been growing expanding at an at a extraordinarily fast rate for rocket league but um there's there's bubble scenes in a bunch of different esports they exist but they're kind of amorphous almost. And so we, we wanted to explore how to really provide infrastructure for that. Um, like ESL does a good job, but it's not, it doesn't do it perfectly. And there's other, there's other organizations that do a good job, but it's not perfect. And we thought we could do it better, but as the conversation morphed, it was, well, we could do that. But then like Josh's background in competitive halo and, and, some of the things that I've done in my in in my past and the people we were surrounding us, ourselves with, basically said, you know what, we could we could just do it, and so far it's been we've made it we've made it a year, and that's basically Ooh. like the hardest point, like that that milestone 
for any startup is probably the hardest part. Um, if we're being honest and doing like a state of the org type thing, like we can be honest, like revenue is not, and this is this goes for like rivalry sports or or team beyond or it like any or any of the tos that Josh mentioned for the tri-state area. Like revenue is not a big thing right now for any for 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 us or any any young startup. But we did make we like we had we had revenue, we had some, and it's and that's growing. The fact that we made it the year, and now we're in rival series. Now we have players going to Vegas for the the Hearthstone Grand or Masters Tour. Like we have the pieces in place to have a phenomenal second year. Uh, that is, it's it's basically having faith and trust that the things you do in that in in your formation and how you treat people is. That's that's my tip and almost not tldr <laughs> for how to start a new <laughs> I, I mean my short story long my, short story my trying a little is, bit longer my tip is don't start an esports org um i think that was our biggest mistake i would say if anything get involved with an already established esports org learn the business learn what it's like to be involved in this stuff because we had to start this while also teaching ourselves at the same time yeah. and it was hell i i, I got to be honest i really would say you know, um, Racer the Beast admitted to me that he was in high school. You're in the prime spot right now in high school to decide that if you want to get into esports, look into business, look into marketing, look into graphics if you're an artist. Um, look at helping develop other teams right now that are, you know, either big or like within that bubble scene. Like someone like RBG would be good for you to join. And then if you really are still desiring, if you can find an investor or you figured out how you want to, create your own brand and your own team then go from there but I, I really think it's better to learn from other people's mistakes before making your own and that's something we had to do personally we had to learn mistakes from ourselves while learning from other esports orgs you know we've had people really help us out like uh, Jason Lake has answered a few questions from Complexity he's answered a few questions that Swan and I have shot over to him uh, we really do appreciate people like him taking his time I've I've talked to the CEO of Team Genji, and he really likes what he hears from RBG and what we're doing. So it's nice to get the confirmation from people who already made it. Say, like, no, you guys are making the right direction. But I personally would say don't start one, join one uh, for now. And then yeah. if you really feel that you are comfortable and know the, the know the area and you can get people to back you up with investing and stuff like that, then go into it. I mean, NRG literally listened to a podcast how it started he had backing up before energy even started and they i actually found out they picked up shaquille o'neal uh as an investor right away like i think it was like within oh, wow. a few a few months Sha shaquille o'neal was in because he was friends mm -hmm. it was a connection it was literally yeah. a pure connection. that um that actually i mean that is kind of how a lot of the big teams mm -hmm. get started is that there is uh one or two guys or even if it's like a venture capital firm in some cases where um, they're willing to get involved in the venture early. And a lot of these teams are getting started when esports was still very young. Yeah. Uh, doing it like this, it's almost like, it's almost at the point where we're now like starting a YouTube channel right now is like a doomed thing. Like if you did yeah. it five, six years ago, you, you had a very good shot of being successful on YouTube. Um, the time hasn't ended. Like the 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 window to get involved in esports is still open. Like I would say now, you, if you do it three years from now, you you probably miss the window. Um, but there's teams like Complexity, teams like Optic, teams uh, like NRG, teams like Splice that um, even have internships in their orgs. If you're in college or in high school and want to learn about the business, you don't necessarily have to. Uh, I mean, you. I mean, we we had we actually had two media interns as well. Um, we had two design, like uh, editors that were interns. Um, there's ways for you to learn about the business, and not start not start your org or not just have a fake org. I would caution you to not just go out with twelve of your buddies and start. Those are clans to me. Don't <laughs> uh, don't just start using three letters as your symbol and call it an esports org. I would advise you against <laughs> that. But, and please uh, don't go around calling yourself a CEO just because you started it. 
There's a difference of actually being on paper and actually being a corporation or an LLC. When you walk up to an investor, you walk up to a sponsor and you say, yeah, I'm the CEO, blah, 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 but you're actually not on paper. That actually looks bad. That's like one of the biggest tips I can give that I've gotten from millions of people. Like I stop even, even millions. I'm on, not millions, you know what I mean? But I, even my, <laughs> even myself, you know, I, on paper, you can actually look us up and you will see that my name is CEO RBG, you know, Josh Arcelia. But I still introduce myself as just the co-founder. I was like, I co-founded this with my friend Swan. That's how I introduce myself. And when they ask, what do you do for it? That's when I mention the title. Otherwise, I don't mention that off the bat. So stop, please. Just get it out of your Twitter. If you're not actually uh, paper legalized as that, just get it out of your Twitter. Get it out of your bio. And just please just, just say you found it. <laughs> <laughs> just do yourself a uh, favor <laughs> yeah so Kyle, it, you've you've had a, a year now as our uh, operations manager how are how have things progressed from your end of rbg well i mean it, with regards to their question of like tips on starting an esports org like if you if you do get to that point where you really do want to start your own organization the the two things that i would say you absolutely need is you need to have help and you need to be organized. It's called an organization for a reason. <laughs> if you go into things haphazardly and like just doing one thing at a time and like putting all your focus into one thing and then all your focus into another thing with no organization about it, it's going to show publicly and people won't take you very seriously. So that's something that I've always been trying to be on top of with RBG as the operations manager, like managing the staff and everything. Um, and trying to like run online like task boards and stuff to just make sure that everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing currently um and i i really can't stress enough how much how important it is to have help right now we just hit like a thousand twitter followers a few days ago which is awesome for us but we are still what's that 1261 yeah 1261 Change. now we doubled Change our maybe. numbers in four or five days literally. yeah but we could be doing so much better but we need help with social media like the the few of us on staff here like none of us have expertise with social media and have the time to dedicate to something like that so finding someone to take charge in each kind of department of the organization you know graphic designers, event coordinators, uh, anything you can think of. Like, it's important to have someone in charge and have people under them, and it starts to create this organization that kind of takes care of itself over time. So get help, be organized. <laughs> Those are my two It tips. certainly is a, uh, a team effort, both in the competition and <clears throat> in the administration. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But an excellent question from Racer to Beast. Thank you very much. It's always a lovely opportunity to talk about the roots of RBG. Yeah. I know it means a lot to everyone in the company and everyone that joins us as we progress and continue to grow. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to come from some very humble roots. But with that in mind, uh, I would like to say uh, an official happy birthday to RBG, a few Ooh. days belated. Yeah. As we have uh, alluded several times, we are now over the uh, one-year threshold and uh, I think uh, with a very fitting birthday celebration in, you know, the Rocket League teams and Villain joining us for Hearthstone, RBG has a very bright, uh, I suppose, one year of life ahead of it, you know, <laughs> being one year older now in the books. But go. moving on just a little bit. RBG stands for Real Birthday Gamers. <laughs> <laughs> There's your final answer. We're gonna change it. All of you that have already been asking. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna, We're gonna throw it. birthday yeah, parties. It stands every for whatever day. we can make it stand for. I'm gonna have a confetti exactly. gun just shooting off every day. You get a birthday. You get a birthday. <laughs> well, we did indeed mention our Twitter uh -huh. as a part of that and growing our presence and celebrating our birthday. I do believe there's a giveaway. There is a the giveaway. Works. We decided to do it to celebrate our first win as an organization in the rival series it's definitely not rapids aeons or astros first win in the rival series but uh, that that roster when it came together it's their first it was their first win as a trio and it's our first win as 
an organization, we decided to give away a titanium white octane for PC users. Um, so you can find the um, probably we'll do a link to that in the, in the <coughs> stuff below. Uh, but yeah, there's like 500 or so people that are entered for that. So uh, I, I mean, you never know. You might be the lucky guy. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and announce this now, too. We will be giving away tickets to DreamHack Dallas. Woo! Uh, we will be giving away a, a few festival passes. I think, Josh, did we decide on two or four? We're going to do four, so two, two lucky four. winners. Two, two, two lucky winners two. will win. Yeah. Two groups of two will give away bam, bam. three. Uh, bam, so, bam. Yeah, three-day passes, the actual festival pass. So three days of DreamHack action. It, um, if you want to do like grandmaster seating for um, the DreamHack Masters event uh, for CS:GO, you'll need to purchase that yourself if you are into that title and want to go to that. But um, you'll have open access to the venue for three full days. And you, and, uh, you can you also and a you can also go to RBGEsports.com, check out our shop, and you can rock some RBG merch. When you go there, come say hi to us, take pictures with us. We'll shout out you on twitter you can shout us out on twitter as well rock it out i mean kyle and uh swan are both rocking the jerseys right now i'm rocking the hoodie this thing's comfortable i love this hoodie i literally wear it like so every day <laughs> we're going to finalize the giveaway for the titanium white octane and once that's over we'll then do the giveaway for uh for the dreamhack dallas tickets Bam. excellent excellent Good luck to all you viewers at home uh, in both of those contests, and we hope to see you reaching out to us on Twitter. So, as long as we're on the topic of promotions and things to be aware of, please do join us for our Saturday night weekly gauntlet. 6 p.m. Eastern has been the time change that we've established uh, for the last few tournaments. Please do come out and join us as we are getting the opportunity to stream some more of the uh, high-octane end of the tournament. Uh, broadcasting both semifinals matches and the finals. We would love to see more tournaments come out, or uh, more people come out to our tournaments, more friendly faces. Uh, we are always interested in growing the esports community here at RBG, and the Gauntlet is the premier event to come show what you're made of in Rocket League and bring some people out with you. Have a good night with your friends, play some competitive esports. Uh, as far as Team games coming up soon. Our rosters. Uh, you said already that there are some uh, games for Rival Series coming up this weekend? Friday and Saturday, we have League Play for Week 4. Um, and then Open Cups for Hearthstone starts soon. Those aren't broadcasted, but I do believe um, Run and Innovation, Many Show, and Now Villain um, may stream some of them. Uh, I was actually going to talk with Villain about that too, because Villain is in a very unique position where he, all, all he's doing right now is competitive Hearthstone. Like he is taking time off. He's doing like a, I think he's doing a gap year from school. Uh, he's doing, he's focused. He is focused on competitive Hearthstone. Uh, so uh, we're going to talk to him about making sure he has all the things he needs to stream and really sure, start sure. growing that brand and growing his audience. Uh, and, so we uh, may be able, uh, I don't think he'll stream it like, the entirety of open cups because the rumor is open cups last like 13 hours but uh definitely get to be maybe able to watch run he said uh villain and innovation stream some hearthstone in the coming weeks most definitely and at the very least please feel free to go join them on their respective twitch channels uh you can find them through the rbg esports team on twitch uh, drop into their chat, give them some support, and maybe give them a bit of encouragement to uh, stream their journeys through these trials. Uh, do we have any more updates, gentlemen, for the uh, upcoming events for the org at large? Any closing remarks? Still looking for uh, people to help with streams for the gauntlet, casters, streamers, yeah. mods, <clears throat> any of that. Uh, We're also interested in picking up um, more media people. If you're a graphic artist or... If you if you think you can make some sweet montages for a variety of different games, or if you're just interested in editing video, uh, we're interested in having a conversation. Yeah, we need a social media manager as well, please. <laughs> take the Instagram <laughs> off too. my hands. <laughs> I don't take those kind of pictures. Yeah, man. Swan, Josh, and I are like dads trying to tweet about oh, RBG <laughs> team wins. <laughs> it's, it's so bad. It's so bad. Oh, and this and this 
for a brief moment, this ties back too to the uh, like running an esports org thing too. Josh, myself, and Kyle all work day jobs. RBG is not our sole job at the moment. We would love for it to be, but it, it's not. It's not. Uh, so if we're working like an eight to five Monday through Friday gig, um, we basically have to like tag team lunch breaks and be like, hey, can you tweet about this event at like <laughs> noon your time? And I'll get this other thing at noon my time. And I, it's just the journeys and trials and tribulations of running a startup from multiple states and cities and time zones. But yeah, uh, it's yeah, no, we, now we're tag can, teaming social media and we, we you can almost person. understand who's talking, who's the t- person. <laughs> yeah, you can almost tell who, who is tweeting, but we would love to find <laughs> one person who would love to help us amp up our Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Facebook game, all the, all that stuff. Um, we know that there are people out there that are severely talented in that department as we are not. Uh, <laughs> so please reach out. That's it. All right. Well, thank you for joining us here once more for the RBG Monthly Roundup. This has been your April April recap of RBG Esports and the goings-on within. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, once more, please feel free to reach out to our social media located below in the video's descriptions and tell us what you thought of the episode. Did you have any comments, any reactions yourself on Rocket League and Epic Games? Did you have an interest in our new uh, rosters? Will you be tuning in this weekend for some of our tournament play in the Rival Series? All these things and more, feel free to reach out to us on our social media. For Kyle, Beardrunner Malone, Michael, Me Swan, Jr. Swan, and Josh Randomize Arcia, I am Daniel, that one Dan guy, Stuff Radican. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you. Thank you.